Hey guys, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. Create a lot of content for MSPs. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up a Windows 10 compliance policy using Microsoft Intune. So I'm in here in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center here. You can either go under Windows by platform and get to compliance policies or just click here under policy, which I'll go ahead and do. I'll click on create policy and I'll select Windows 10 or later from the drop down list and click on create. When I do here, you can go ahead and name the policy whatever you want. You can give it a description for the sake of time. I'm not going to do that here. But under the compliance settings here, you have a list here that you can go through. Under device health, you have Windows Health Attestation Service rules that you can configure. This is if there's a TPM chip on the device itself. You can require BitLocker. You can require secure boot to be enabled, and you can require code integrity at boot as well too. If you do not have a TPM chip on the device and you set these to require, it'll just show as not applicable in the settings and not actually mark the device as non-compliant. The bigger piece here though is under the setting of uh, system security, which I'll get to in comparison of, of looking at this one. When we look at device properties, you can define min or max OS versions. So there may be a minimum OS version due to a security patch that you want to have across the organization, or there may be a minimum version for software requirements that you have with third party software or line of business applications that need a certain OS to function. So this may be something that you require for the device to be compliant. For configuration manager compliance, this is only if you have a, a hybrid environment where you're integrating SCCM as well too. I don't see that very common with the MSP space, so I'm not going to get into it in depth here. For system security, this section up here for passwords is for mobile devices, but this is where I was mentioning we get a little bit of overlap here. So we have encryption of data on storage of the device, and it's different than required BitLocker here. With this one, again, you need that TPM chip, but this one, it's just saying that the drive is encrypted no matter what. It could be BitLocker, it could be a third-party encryption service as well too, but requiring this here doesn't necessarily say it's needing BitLocker, it just has to have the drive encrypted. So if you do this one, I recommend doing just one or the other. If there's a TPM chip on the device, require BitLocker, and then don't worry about this, um, but this is one or the other, and if you do both, it's fine but you may find that you have to reboot the device for them both to show up as compliant in some cases. For device security, um, you have the ability to require a firewall, you have the uh, ability to require a trusted TPM, antivirus, anti-spyware, software on the device itself, Microsoft Defender anti-malware. This is if you don't have really a third-party endpoint protection service going on on the device for malware protection. If you do and you set this to require, it's going to show the device is non-compliant in a lot of cases because that third-party service will essentially be taking over for the Defender anti-malware services that were on the device. You can configure this to have both running at the same time, but in no case can you still do real-time protection and have this running with certain third-party protection services, which I'll show you here. I know it's a little confusing when I say, but I'll give you a clear example of what I mean. Because the device I have that I've implemented this on is using Sentinel-1 as the endpoint protection and I'll show you some of the settings there for being compliant. Last section here is Defender ATP. I don't see a lot of MSPs using this today but I do consider it something that's going to be more popular in the future based on the fact that they made it standalone and available with the Microsoft Business Package so you can start deploying this and it makes sense that they would have this in here so that you can start to leverage their full solution stack for heightened level features of compliance here because this will show you if it's in a, a certain status risk score as they call it here. So after you're done with the settings, you can go enter the actions for non-compliance. You can say to mark device non-compliant immediately and that's the default setting. The only way or reason I would say that you want, want to give it a grace period here, which is typing in a number of days um, is if you are deploying a conditional access policy as well too where you're saying that devices that are non-compliant don't have access to corporate resources and by doing so you know if they enroll their device if one of these things isn't compliant then you're immediately uh, grant blocking their access for a non-compliant device so 
that's the only reason I would say that might be a good thing in your scenario and you want to go ahead and remote into that device and, and configure those settings before they can access their office software and just open up a ticket. And especially in this remote workforce that we have today, that might be a consideration. But in other cases, you don't want them losing access immediately once they enroll the device. So be careful with that one if you have a conditional access policy stood up. Lastly here, for the assignments, you can select scope to use as a groups here if you want, but typically in a lot of cases, this isn't going to be something that you apply different settings to different people with. They're not that granular of settings, honestly. So in most cases, you're going to do all users, but it could be scope to just users you know have Windows devices, for instance, and others may have Mac devices. So that could be the case. But once you're done, you can review this and uh, create it, so then everything will apply. I've already created a, a device compliance policy here for Windows 10 just for the sake of showing you this in a demo. And I applied these settings here and I've applied them out to this D2 device that's showing up as non-compliant. So as far as viewing why a device is non-compliant goes, you can click into it here, then you can click into device compliance, and then you can see that this is in a non-compliant state. You can look at the available settings here. So it's basically showing you that, you know, this is firewalls compliant, code integrity is not applicable because it doesn't have a TPM. But the Defender anti-wires, uh, Defender anti-malware security intelligence is up to date, but the anti-malware is in a non-compliant state. And this is again because we have a third party on there that shut that off. So if I go into that device here, we see under the Windows security section, virus and threat protection, we have my Sentinel agent running just taking over, but you do have the option here to turn this on, to have Windows Defender checking for threats in addition to your third party. So let's go ahead and turn this on here. I can say you sure, you can say yes. All right, now that I did that, it's got that running as well in addition to Sentinel-1. I can go back up here and I can go back to the device. And I'll just run a quick sync. And this will take a minute here, but we'll refresh a couple of times and should run the sync and then we'll see this if, if it turns back into a compliant state. So we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back here. That took about one minute actually. And we're showing us in a compliant state now. So if we go back into the compliance policy, we see I got a green checkbox here and we see that we've got the Fedor anti-malware in a compliant state as well too. So that's common in troubleshooting, just coming in here and viewing, you know, what's going on, why is this in a status. These these ones for this these settings are pretty straightforward as far as it not being compliant, uh, except for the ones that I just showed you there. So one to relay those. But that's everything with the compliance policy guys for Windows 10. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, please like or subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the modern workplace. Thanks guys, have a great day.